This video should be a great introduction to quantifiers in predicate logic. So as I've been drilling into your heads over and over and over, we know a propositional function p of x is not considered a proposition until it has a truth value. Up to this point, the only thing we knew how to do is to assign a value to our variable. So for instance, if p of x represented x is greater than zero, then I could give it a truth value by assigning some value to x. Because now I can say four is greater than zero because I've replaced x with four, and four is greater than zero is true. So up to this point, that's all we knew how to do. Now we're going to take a propositional function and turn it into a proposition using a quantifier. So we are not going to give the variable a value, we're going to use a quantifier like for all x or there exists some x. So these are the two that are most commonly used and they're the ones we're going to focus on, but of course there are several more. So the universal quantifier, is, this is our symbol, it's the upside down a. And the way that we say that is for all. So if I were to write for all x, p of x, that would mean for every x, p of x is true. And we're going to talk about both of these in detail on the following slides. The other is the existential quantifier, and that just means there exists. So it's the backwards e, and we're saying there exists some x. So there exists some x such that p of x is true. So let's look at these in more detail. Let's talk a bit more about the universal quantifier. If we have a statement for all x, p of x, that tells us that the proposition p of x must be true for all values of x in the domain of discourse or in the universe or just domain. So domain, domain of discourse, universe, universe of discourse, these are all terms that you might see in your studies dealing with uh, quantifiers. So let's take a look at an example. What we're saying is, if we have for all x p of x, then in order for us to have a truth value of true, it must be true for every value of x in the domain. Looking at my first example, I'm saying let the domain be z, which is of course integers. Integers are positive and negative, natural numbers, and of course, zero. So if it's all integers, to prove this is false, all I have to do is find a counterexample. So let's use negative three. Negative three is in fact an integer, and negative three is greater than zero is false. And therefore, for all x, p of x is false because I have found a counter example. So in order to show something is false, all we have to do is find a counter example, which is a value that is in the universe or domain, but shows us that the statement, the proposition is false. Now let's take a look at the next one. I have now that the universe is positive integers, which would start with one and two and three and four. And so if I'm looking at all of those values, is it true that all of those values are greater than zero? Yes, so this is true. Now that's not a proof, it's just our way of reasoning through it. So I didn't prove this, I showed by a counterexample, but I can't really do a proof for this yet. Let's now look at the existential quantifier. Again, the statement, there exists some x, such that p of x, tells that, that the proposition p of x must be true for some value or values of x in the domain of discourse. So how are we going to show it's true? How are we going to show it's false? 
Again, let's take a look at an example and hopefully it will make sense to us. For you, the universe of integers using x is greater than zero. Can I find some integer that is greater than zero? Well, let's use seven. Seven is an integer. Seven is greater than zero is true. And all I need in the existential is to find one value that makes it true because it has to be one or more. So because I have found a value, it is true. Let's take a look at the negative integers, negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. Can I find any one of those values that is greater than zero? Well, all of those values are in fact less than zero because they are negative and therefore that is false. Again, it's okay to just show an example for true in this case, but for false, it would require a proof and we're not to that point yet. I wanted to throw this in here. This is just sort of a, an organizational system to make sure we understand the difference between the two. So we have the universal quantifier on the left. It's the upside down A is the symbol. It means for all. When is it true? When P of X is true for every X in the domain, but it's false if there is just one X in the domain for which it's false. And then, of course, because we've been dealing with our connectives, the statement for all x, p of x, is equivalent to saying that it's true for the first x, and it's true for the next x, and it's true for the next x, etc., for every single value in the domain. Whereas the existential is the backwards e and means there exists. When is it true? When there is an x in the domain for which p of x is true. So just there just has to be one. When is it false? When p of x is false for every x. So I want you to see here that these are sort of crisscrossed here. For every x over here, for every x over here, whereas when it's true, when it's false, is now when there's just one, when there is just one. And then of course there exists some x such that p of x is true, would be it's true for the first value or the second value or the third, and it just has to be true for one of those, and that's what that or means, whereas and means it must be true for all. Here are a couple practice for us to try just to make sure we understand each of those quantifiers. So let P of X be X squared is greater than zero. And the domain in the first example, I'm looking at the pink example, consists of all integers. So now I need to find the truth values of for all X P of X and there exists some X P of X. So X squared is greater than zero for the value of all integers. Is it true that all integers if I square them are greater than zero? Well, almost. However, zero is considered an integer. And zero squared is greater than zero is a false statement. And because I have found one counterexample, then this entire statement, I'm going to put therefore for all x, P of X is false. There exists some X such that P of X is true. Well, can I find one integer like one? One squared is greater than zero. Sure, that's true. So all I have to do is find one, therefore, there exists some x such that p of x is true, is true. All right, now let's take a look at x squared is less than zero. 
for all x, p of x. So for every single integer, is it true that if I square it, it's less than 0? Well, hopefully that's pretty clear that this is false because obviously if I take negative 1 and square it, I get 1 is less than 0, and that's false. And so if I find a counterexample, then the whole statement is false. So therefore, for all x, p of x is false. There exists some x such that p of x is true. So is it possible for me to come up with some x that when I square it, it is less than 0 in the domain of the integers? And again, hopefully we know that that, in fact, would be false. Now, one way you can go about doing this, and for most of us, we can just look at it and say, okay, well, there's no way to square something and get a negative value if we're dealing with integers. But you can always think about cycling through the values. So I can think about taking negative 3 and squaring it and finding out what happens, and negative 2 and squaring it, and negative 1 and squaring it, and 0 and squaring it, and 1, and 2, and 3. And I can go as far as I need to in each direction to test that to determine the truth value. Here are two more that I would like for you to try on your own. So if you would press pause, try all the parts of each question and when you are ready press play to see how you did. For the first one we have let p of x be x plus 1 equals 2x. So what I would do is I would say x plus 1 equals 2x by subtracting x from each side gives me x equals 1. So to me again dealing with the integers tells me yes there does exist an x such that p of x is true because I just found that the x is 1. So this guy is true. Is it true for all integers? No, of course it's not. I can't plug in any old integer and find, have it be equal to 1. I can only plug in 1 and have it be equal to 1. My next one, x squared, is less than 16. Again, if I were to solve this, I would have negative 4 is less than x is less than 4 in order for that to be true. So does there exist some integer that is between negative 4 and 4? Yes, so that's true. Like 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 is less than 16 is true. So I have found an example that shows that it's true. For all x's, if x, I'm sorry, if the domain is all integers, no, because I can find a counterexample. Let's say 5 squared, oops, not greater than, 5 squared is less than 16, which is, of course, 25 is less than 16, which is false. So this is false, again, with a counterexample. And I didn't have a counterexample up here, but I could have. 3 plus 1 equals 2 times 3. 4 equals 6 is obviously false. So it's always good to give a counterexample when you're saying false and true. We're just going to reason through it or explain why. I did want to throw in one more quantifier uh, just because it's similar to one that we've already learned about, the existential quantifier. If you see that with an exclamation point, it's called the uniqueness quantifier. And instead of saying there exists, it's essentially saying there exists exactly one, which means there exists a solution and it is unique, which is why it's called the uniqueness quantifier. So give the truth value for there exists a unique x such that p of x is true for each of these propositions. And the domain is all integers. So looking at the first, we have p of x represents 2x equals 4. Well, again, using, oops, I was going to switch up my colors here. Using basic algebra, 2x equals 4 is equivalent to x equals 2. That is just one value. So that is true. 2x is greater than 4 is equivalent to x is greater than 2. And there is more than one integer that is greater than true. So that is false. Again, I could provide a counterexample where x is, say, um, 3, 
four, etc. This one's a little bit harder to do a counterexample. You'd have to show, hey, there's more than one. Uh, Px represents 2x equals 3. So again, using algebra, 2x equals 3 tells me x equals 1.5. So 1.5 is a solution, but remember, we're in the domain of integers. So is 1.5 an integer? No. So false. There is not a unique integer such that 2x equals 3 is true. So we have barely scratched the surface for what we can know about quantifiers. I do want to take a look next at what happens when we negate a quantifier, including De Morgan's laws for quantifiers and what happens when we translate with quantifiers.